when you're in your current season, how deep into a current season are you that you start planning for the future seasons? Oh, wow. We start, um, we started looking uh, for sets and locations um, in season two for season three. We, we plan, we have to plan so far ahead because normally we're building everything. We're, we're uh, planning, uh, you know, all the costumes have to be made. So we, we plan way out ahead. I know I recognized your name from Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which is actually my favorite sci-fi show of all time. I really love it. That was a really fun show. I was actually just mentioning in passing to a friend who was in the same room your name, and they were like, no, it makes sense that she works on both the shows because of the lead females. How much of it that you feel my friend was just commenting, or how much you believe that's true? There's a lot with Sarah. There's a lot with Claire. Uh... There is, and they're they're both superheroes, really. They're both uh, kick-ass women who take on uh, you know huge, huge challenges and um, and go to you know Herculean lengths to um, make things happen for the people they love, you know, for the men they love. For Sarah Connor's uh, case, it was her son. Um, it's always fun to write for really strong women, and a great and great to put that out there for girls that are watching. And you had moved from like Caprica to Hellcats to this. Did you have to have a transition in mindset, or you were like, "No, this is just the next show that I'm working on"? Um, no, actually, I I had read the books a long time ago. So when um, Ron and Meryl were taking it out, um, and they 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 knew they were getting interest, um, it, I think I I knew that I was going to move on to that show. So um, and knowing the books as well as I did, um, it was kind of a natural fit for me. So um, I was excited when they sold it and, and uh, pretty much uh, started the next day as soon as they, as soon as they uh, got the green light. So Earlier we talked about planning for the seasons after. Are there already scenes from the book that you guys already know it's not going to make it in due to time restraints and you guys just kind of look at each other and kind of have a silent agreement that you guys already know what scenes those might be? No, I don't think we ever exclude anything when we start. It's we, we, we take the whole thing and go, what can we do here rather than what we, what we can't do? Um, and then we, we, you know, we, we tend to write things and then we, we look at it on the page and then we put it into the practical sense when we go to production. And in production, we try to find ways of doing everything and it's only at the last, you know, usually when we go, we tried everything we can possible. We just can't fit this in or we can't make it. We can't do it in the time constraint. What we have to deal with is time. And because uh, we, we just only have a certain amount of time that we have the actors, that we have the production. And if we can't fit it in, that's what really kills us. But so. we do pull from all the books. And so if we have favorite parts that don't make it in, we always save those little gems for later. And we, even now, we'll pull in something from book one, because we'll remember, if it was good enough for us to remember and stick with us, we'll pull it into the new season and the new, and find a place for it. Exactly. We know in the books, John kind of has his own books. Do you believe for a character growing as popular as Brianna would be able to carry her own series? Oh, that's, I, you know, I, I'm just focused on... Uh, doing the best for Outlander, it, it, to think of other series at this time would take too many brain cells away. So. I think the fans love this uh, yeah. series so much that they'd follow any of these characters. We always joke that, uh, that Rollo needs his own series. Yeah, we'll follow Rollo <laughs> around. So. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.